everyone, my name is Miss Karen, and I am so thankful that you are here with me. If you weren't here, well, I guess I'd just be standing here talking to myself, which would just be a little weird, right? So thank you, I appreciate it. What about you? Is there anyone out there that you are thankful for today? Nice, I think it's fantastic to think about being grateful for things. But honestly, we need to show some gratitude, right? We've got to let people know that we see them doing amazing things for us. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. If someone helps you out, let them know you're thankful. If someone's kind, let them know you see their kindness. And if someone says, hey, watch out for that quicksand, well, I guess it's probably a good idea to yell, thanks. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Don't forget to shout it out. Say thank you. Today I have a great game for us to play. It's called Whisper, Speak, Shout. I'll give you some commands and I'll whisper, speak, or shout. Everything I ask you to do has something to do with farming. Don't worry, if you're not a farmer, I'll give you a preview so you know what to do. Are you ready? Try these with me. Work the plow. Work the plow simple. You grab your hands like a handlebars and you run. Sow the seed. You'll grab some seed from your side pouch and then throw. Grab, throw, grab, throw. Good job. Okay, get them weeds. Get on your hands and knees and pretend to pull weeds out of the ground. Dig a hole. This one's pretty simple. You pretend to dig a hole. Shovel dirt, throw it over your shoulder. Shovel dirt, throw it over your shoulder. Yoke the ox. Link arms with the person with you, if you have somebody with you. If you don't, just put your hands on your hips like this, and then lean to the left, lean to the right, lean to the left, lean to the right. This last one's the fun one. Snakes in the field. When I say this, you run off to the side of the room. Ready? Snakes in the field. Okay, now remember, I will either whisper, speak, or shout, okay? So you'll have to pay close attention to know what to do next. Let's start out easy. Work the plow. Sow the seed. Get them weeds. Dig a hole! Yoke the ox. Snakes in the field. Nice job. Okay, I think you're ready to mix things up a little bit. Here we go. Work the plow. Yoke the ox. Snakes in the field! Okay, that was the easy round. Here we go, we're gonna get harder. Ready? Here we go. I'm not gonna do the actions anymore, it's up to you. Sow the seed. Get them weeds. Dig a hole. Work the plow! Yoke the ox. Snakes in the field! <laughs> okay, here we go again. One more time. It's gonna get faster and trickier. Here we go. Work the plow. Get them weeds. Sow the seed. Work the plow. Dig a hole! Get them weeds. Work the plow! Yoke the ox. Dig a hole. Get them weeds! Work the plow. Snakes in the field. Did I get you? <laughs> awesome job! Well, that was quite the game. Now tell me, were the commands easier to hear if I shouted them, spoke them, 
heck thought so. Well, sometimes the same goes for thanking others. It's way better when they can actually hear it. When you look through the Bible in the New Testament, you can see that Jesus loved to tell a story. He would use everyday things around him to help people understand something important about God. One time, Jesus was talking with his closest friends, the disciples. He told them a story about what the kingdom of heaven is really like. Now, kingdom of heaven can be a little tough for us to understand, but basically it's like what things are like in heaven where God reigns and he's the king. Talking about the kingdom of heaven is a way for us to know the things that are important to God. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 through 15. While Jesus taught in many different ways, he often shared the most important truths as stories. He used the things and animals and situations in people's everyday lives to help them understand things that were bigger. One day, Jesus explained to his closest friends what the kingdom of heaven was like, and he used a story to help it connect. Now, if he told that story to us today in our world right now, I think it would go a little something like this. There once was a man who owned a large vineyard. Here at Grape Escape Vineyards, we specialize in red, white, and green grapes. One bright autumn day, the man called in his manager to find out how his harvest was doing. It's doing great. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. We shall pick the grapes immediately before the beetles nibble them up. That's some good raisin in. The next morning, the vineyard owner rose while it was still dark and hurried to the center of town. He arrived at around 6 a.m. and there were people still standing around noshing on grape jelly muffins. Are you looking for work? Yes, indeed. How much do you pay? One hundred dollars for the day. Precisely perfect. Let us proceed. The owner led the workers back to his vineyard. Baskets, hats, uh, don't squash the grapes. Oh, what happens if we do that? They might whine a little. The vineyard owner wanted to be sure that the beetles wouldn't ruin his precious grape harvest, so around three hours later at nine o'clock, he returned to the town center and found more people lined up for work. You come pick grapes for me, I'll pay you well. Good deal, let's go. The workers were all picking as fast as they could, but there were still long rows to harvest, so the vineyard owner went back to the town center at 12 o'clock noon, three hours later, and there were still plenty of workers standing around. Come, help out in my vineyard. And after the new set of workers had worked for three hours, the vineyard owner returned to the town square again at three o'clock. Need some more grape pickers, you in? The blazing sun beat down as the vineyard owner added the new workers to his crew. One of them had hired at dawn, wiped sweat off his face as he sipped his water. Showing up for work in the afternoon. What a terrible work ethic. <sighs> The first workers returned to picking grapes, filling basket after basket. But even though it was still five o'clock, the vineyard owner returned to the town square where he still found plenty of people hanging around counting cockroaches and looking bored. Why have you been standing here all day? No one like hired us. I'll hire you, come work in my vineyard. For the final hour of the workday, Everybody pitched in. Whew. As the last baskets of grapes were brought up, the owner called to his manager. Just look at all these beautiful grapes, all freshly harvested. A great job, if I do say so. Pay the workers. Start with the ones I hired last of all. So the manager pulled out his cash box and lined up the workers. He started with the ones who only picked grapes for an hour. Here you go. One hundred dollars. Like totally rad, man! At the other end of the line, the workers who began at dawn began doing some quick math. A hundred dollars for one hour of work? Huh, 
That means we're about to get over a thousand dollars. The manager continued to hand out pay packets to the workers who started at three o'clock. One hundred dollars. And noon. One hundred dollars. And nine o'clock in the morning. One hundred dollars. Huh. Okay. By the time the workers who started at 6 a.m. reached the front of the line, they were getting a little bit um, worried. You're paying us what's fair for working all day, right? Yep. One hundred dollars. What? Preposterous! The early morning workers stalked off to find the vineyard owner. You paid those hooligans who only worked an hour the same as us, even though we sweated all day picking your grapes. Just look at this crispy sunburn. Friends, didn't you agree to $100 for the whole day? That is a technicality. Do you feel cheated because I gave so freely to the other workers? Don't I have a right to do what I want with my own money? But it's not fair. Take your money and go. I want to give the ones I hired last the same pay I gave you. The early workers glared and skulked away, cash in hand. They had let the owner's generosity to someone else ruin their day. Jesus' story made it clear. God gives freely to everyone. Rather than focusing on what you don't have, adjust your attitude. Choose to look at what you do have. Jesus' story made it pretty clear. God gives freely to everyone. He gives what he wants to whom he wants. Instead of worrying about what someone else got, adjust your attitude. Be thankful for what you got instead. You know, it's tough when life just doesn't seem fair. I totally get it. Sometimes things happen that are totally out of our control and we feel like we're missing out on something good. But there's something we can control with God's help and that's our attitude. You can do this. Adjust your attitude. You can find a way to be grateful in any situation. It's hard sometimes, but it's still a choice. You can choose how you react and you can choose what your attitude will be. You can make the wise choice and decide to be thankful for what you have instead of trying to make sure that no one gets more than you. You know, it can help you adjust your attitude when you think about what God gave us, all of us, when he sent Jesus. Jesus died for everyone so that we could have a relationship with God and be forgiven. We didn't deserve a gift like that. No one did, but God gave it anyway. He showed love to all of us. I know it's tough when things happen that don't seem fair, but instead of being jealous or complaining, we can choose to be thankful instead. I'll say this as gently as possible. Adjust your attitude. Don't look at others and think about what you don't have. Look at what you do have and be grateful. Let's pray and ask God to help us do that. God, this is a hard thing to get, even for us adults. We compare ourselves to other people, and we get caught up in what we think should be fair. Please help us to adjust our attitude and see your blessings for what they really are. Blessings from you. You're generous to everyone. You're good to us, God, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our memory verse, Psalm 136, verse 1, is a great reminder of how much God loves us. Do you know it? Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Psalm 136, verse 1. Make an attitude adjustment. It'll change your mood. It'll change your situation. And it will change your life. Okay, let's check to see if you're awake. What does T-H-A-N-K-Y-O-U spell? That's right. It spells thank you. It's important for us to thank God for everything he's done. Let's sing and tell him how grateful we are for his amazing love. I'll see you next time. Every time I'm feeling down, you pick me up. Sing. Thank you.
yours too. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Thank you for the way you love me. 